great pleasure to introduce uh, Oscar Garcia Prada, who is going to tell us about the Red Dog Murray qualities and maximum variations of course. Thank you, thank you. and uh, I want to thank you and the other organizers for giving me the opportunity to come for the first time to Moscow. And I'm also very glad you are not dressing army in front of me. I would be very intimidating. Um, uh, don't worry. <laughs> we'll see, yes, it may happen, depending on the talk. <laughs> All right, well, uh, so, um, so, one of the main motivations for me has been the study of the topology of the character variety, the modulus phase of representations of the number of surface. So, let me just uh, I'll go very quickly on this first thing because there have been uh, mentioned already in you know, Steve's talk, but just to set the notation, so you please bear with me. That, uh, so we have a uh, uh, oriented smooth compact surface, and we consider the fundamental group, and we consider a connected semi-simple Lie group, which will be real or complex. And uh, of course our representation is nothing but a homomorphism from the fundamental group of the surface in G. And uh, this is a set, the set of all homomorphisms in an analytic variety, as the variety of G is on the right. And the group G acts uh, on this set uh, by conjugation. And uh, as, as we all know. And so I want to consider reductive representation which uh, often the fundamental group, which means that if you compose it with the actual representation in the Lie algebra, that decomposes as the sum of individual representations. And I want to do a set of all reductive representations, and then define, so basically to set notation, even though I've been collaborating with Steve for almost 30 years, we don't agree it's still on notation. And, uh, and so the uh, so the modular space of representations uh, then is defined as the orbital space of the set of reductive representations, putting uh, uh, as of reductive representations. And this is well known to be a analytic variety, a variety of right, right, and so on. And so we, as I said at the beginning, are uh, interested in the topology and geometry of this modular space. And uh, the approach to this problem is by means of algebraic geometry, complex algebraic geometry, and using Higgs bundles. So we have seen Higgs bundles uh, in this uh, meeting already, and in particular in Steve's talk, a good uh, set of examples of uh, Higgs bundles in particular for some uh, complex and real groups, some real forms. But I want to give you a general uh, presentation uh, a general definition of uh, Higgs bundles in our setup. And so X is now a compact Riemann surface. And, uh, and so uh, oops, I want to consider a maximal, we fix a maximal compact subgroup of G. Uh, remember, this is a semi simple real group, real complex. And uh, we have this, uh, the Cartan uh, evolution uh, in the Lie algebra that gives me a composition of the Lie algebra of G in the Lie algebra of the maximal uh, compact plus uh, N dimension, and where we have these basic relations. And uh, in particular, uh, so yeah, the Cartan composition orthogonal with respect to the clean form of the, of the Lie algebra. And uh, a special uh, role is played by the complexification of the isotopic representation, I do consider the actual representation of the group G in its Lie algebra, and restrict to H that gives you two representations, the uh, uh, actual representation of H, and it gives you the isotopic representation that you complexify. So this is the complexified isotopic representation. I'll give you the site, not to make people go. <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, so here is what a GX bundle is in uh, this uh, context. So uh, a GX bundle <coughs> is a pair, if e consisting of a holomorphic principal HC bundle. Remember, H was the maximal compact of G, and we can identify a group. And then phi is a holomorphic section of the uh, bundle associated 
to the isotopic representation, so it has fiber, this uh, orthogonal part in MC, and is tensored by the canonical line bundle of the river surface. So this is a genetic bundle uh, in general. And okay, so I go uh, quickly through this because we have to be on time in the ballet and uh, so there, whatever you're doing. And, uh, and so, I know it defines the stability, so why should I bother? But, uh, so, one can define the stability of these objects, and uh, it usually involves just uh, uh, choosing parabolicid groups of the structure group and anti dominant characters, and then uh, defining a degree for a reduction of, uh, of the bundle to a parabolic and uh, the character, and so, uh, in the inequality condition on the degree. And uh, you find also a uh, policy. So let's go quickly on this. So these are the conditions that emerge from geometric invariant theory, which allow you to construct a modular space of these objects. And uh, and so the modular space of policy bundles can be uh, considered as a set of isomorphism classes of policy bundles. Uh, and this is a complex of variety of colors for any year at all. And then do the construction in this generality um, made by a shape, for example. All right. So this is the uh, so the uh, um, so a stability emerges from DRT, as I said, but it also emerges as the necessary and sufficient condition to prove the existence of solutions to the self-duality equations. So this is uh, if you have a a, uh, a DHX bundle, uh, if it uh, is polystable, if and only if there exists a reduction of a structure group. Remember, the structure group is HC, so a uh, reduction to the maximal compact, which is H also, such that you have uh, the Higgy equation satisfied, and here uh, uh, this FH is the curvature of the chain connection, so the unique connection compatible with the H connection compatible with the homomorphic structure. And, uh, and this is just the conjugation that you have um, here, which involves uh, going from one single forms to zero one, and the conjugation that you have in this other part given by uh, the uh, reduction to the maximum compact, right, by the compact real form. So this is the actual equation, and so that's another uh, motivation, that's how stability actually, I uh, don't care about GIT, that's how stability emerges uh, from HC. And uh, yeah, so this was uh, here, by the artists, group by these people here. And, uh, and uh, right, so the uh, uh, important fact that has been mentioned several times now is that if you uh, choose on the smooth compact surface, a complex structure, so making the uh, compact remote surface, then there is homeomorphism between the moduli space of representations and the moduli space of all the right? And this is the tool we are going to use to study the topology of the character variety, the topology is the same as the topology of the, uh, of the moduli space of D bundles. And uh, yeah, so just uh, this, as we mentioned already, how you go from a uh, uh, DX bundle to a flat connection by combining <coughs> the, the, the H connection with the Higgs field and its conjugate, and then uh, the, the uh, reverse uh, direction thanks to the existence of harmonic matrix on a reductive G bundle, which uh, proved by Donaldson for SL2C and uh, I call it in the generality that we uh, need to keep. Okay, so this is the here I have and uh, the, uh, 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 a representation and the corresponding flat bundle, yeah? So then um, when you consider the associated bundle of symmetric spaces, then the existence of harmonic section of this is equivalent to the relative uh, to what we redact. And uh, so uh, remember that a, um, um, a section of this bundle is just uh, a pi one x equivariant map from the universal covering to this, right? and uh, and so that is the harmonicity of this is equivalent to solving the integral. 
So these are the main ingredients to prove the non-abelian part correspondence that everybody knows. So just to fix some notation that I'm going to use later. Um, okay, so let's get to some um, more uh, so we, uh, into the subject. And so I want to talk about Hodge bundles and variations of Hodge structure. And uh, so again, I consider it to be a real form of uh, now the real form of a semi-central complexity group, GC. And uh, I consider uh, the complexified Lie algebra of, of, uh, of the Lie group T and a, a set grade of this uh, complexified algebra. So remember, uh, a set grade <coughs> is uh, just, uh, just uh, a decomposition of this Lie algebra in subspaces uh, in its uh, integers satisfying the the uh, back condition right? and of course because we are working on a on a real form and we should not forget that uh, we have the composition just to keep it in mind of g in h plus m and then uh, the complexification of g in the complexification of h plus m, <coughs> the of m then each of these uh, terms <coughs> in the gradient so decomposes according to a piece which is in Hc and a piece that is in Hc. Okay? So that is the background that I need to define you what is Hodge bundle. And uh, so a Hodge, uh, so uh, a Hilic bundle in the modular space is called a Hodge bundle if the uh, principal bundle admits a reduction of a structured group to H0C. This H0C is the Lie group corresponding to the, to the Lie algebra H0C, which is in this uh, piece in the G0, uh, the, the part of G0. Okay? So that is an analytic group corresponding to that. And then phi is actually taking values in the M1C. So you take the G1 here and uh, you require that the Higgs field should be in the M1. Okay? So that is uh, Hodge bundle. Um, and I guess this terminology was introduced by Carlos. And, uh, no, not so well, not, 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 uh, anyway, So this is a. Uh, uh, there are many reasons. Huh? Not in the principle, really. Okay. Well, this is, in any case, uh, good reasons to call this uh, Hodge bundles. And uh, for uh, one thing, uh, yeah, let me not, not go ahead, uh, and I'm going to go ahead of what I am going to say, which is that why I'm introducing these objects is because, remember, there is the natural, the natural action of C star on the modular space of the bundles by scaling the Higgs field multiplied by lambda. And so the important fact is that um, the point, uh, if we uh, in the logic space is fixed and the uh, this direction even only if it is a Hodge bundle. Right? And uh, so that's why uh, so Hodge bundles are the fixed points and the, the CSR action that one has in the logic space. And uh, so this uh, is a um, so if you consider the representation in G corresponding to the G bundle, this uh, means that um, uh, then if it's a Hodge bundle, if and only if the equivariant harmonic map that I wrote before that goes to the, into the symmetric space from the universal cavity to the symmetric space lifts to an equivariant horizontal holomorphic map uh, to G mod H0. So this is a homogeneous space. In general, may not have a complex structure. However, there is always a horizontal complex structure, and so the condition of being a, 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 a fixed point in the CSR action is actually that the, the, the phi, uh, the f, the harmonic map, lifts to actually uh, to this um, f tilde, to this homogeneous space. And so I, it's not a usual way of calling a variation of Hodge structure, but I call the pair of row representation and this f tilde a variation of Hodge structure. And I mean, we have the usual, you think, 
uh, of the corresponding flat connection to recover the usual uh, way of thinking of the variation of function structure. So there's a good reason to call these Hodge bundles. There is, uh, yeah, so let's say that there is, uh, so um, uh, solving the teaching equations that I wrote before for dedic bundles, one uh, obtains a reduction of the structure group to the maximum compact, and then one can define, oh sorry, So one can define this uh, function that Steve already mentioned uh, that, uh, from the modulus space that takes the L2 norm of the X field. This is called the Hitching functional. And if this uh, were smooth, it would be a nice Morse ball function, but uh, it's just uh, in terms of a proper function. And uh, for many purposes, that's, as Steve already stated, that's good enough. In some cases, this is actually a, a smooth. And uh, so this is with really, really exceptional cases. And this is a, a really uh, what Morse uh, function. I'll come back to that. So a, a smooth point is a critical point for this function, uh, for this function, if and only if it is a Hodge bundle. So Hodge bundles are not only uh, fixed points of the interaction, but they are also critical subvarieties, uh, critical points for this teaching function. Uh, this uh, almost more such. So, and I said there is a good reason to call this uh, Hodge bundle, which relates, to, of course, uh, to variation of Hodge structure. But to say another uh, reason, that, I mean, all of these are all related, of course, and is the fact, the following fact, that um, uh, among the real forms of a semi simple complex group GC, uh, so uh, you take the real form, which is defined as the fixed points. Uh, uh, of an inversion of an anti-polymorphic inversion, a conjugation. So the group, uh, the real form is said to be of much type if this uh, uh, conjugation is inner equivalent to the conjugation that defines a compact real form. And so it's the, the same inner class. You go to the uh, uh, group of outer automorphisms, so they are in the same inner class. And this is a, is a Hodge type. And uh, in that uh, situation, actually, so if uh, G is a group of Hodge type and H is a maximal compact a group, then remember that the pivot domain uh, is a G homogeneous uh, space G mod X0 equipped with a homogeneous convex structure where X0 is actually the uh, uh, subgroup of H, which is the H centralizer of uh, uh, torus in H. And so what is special about this is that you have a period domain, so where in this situation, you, in particular you have a group of Hodge type, then uh, there is a canonical uh, set rating of the complexified the algebra, um, uh, satisfying that actually the complexification of H0 is the complex subgroup corresponding to the G0 and uh, the, uh, uh, the, the even, uh, uh, even uh, uh, subspaces, I mean in this index by K even, are in HC and the ones in this by, by uh, odd are in MC. So it's very special to these uh, groups of much type. And so we would refer to this whole package sometimes as a Hodge structure on the group G. I have seen this in Canvas so it refuses to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the one where you have an arbitrary H. Uh, okay, yes. But I mean, but in fact, in fact, what happens is that, uh, 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 what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, I'll come back to, to, to what I was going to say. But let me just say some examples of groups of Hodge type and Hodge structures. A very important example is the case of groups of remission type. This is when the symmetric space uh, corresponding to uh, G uh, is scalar and uh, is a Hodge type. And the, a particular Hodge structure is just a, a very important Hodge structure, is taking H0 to be H itself. And so the digital domain is the symmetric space itself. 
I mean, this is, uh, you know, in the Hermitian case, the symmetric space is actually complex, and so that is, uh, yeah, so that's a bigger domain. But this, in a sense, trivial sort of uh, uh, Hodge structure. Uh, in the classical groups, you here are two examples of groups of Hodge type, uh, SO2PQ, and uh, where H maximum compact is this. And you can take, take H0 to be just uh, UP, subgroup of this, and then SOQ. And also you have the uh, symplectic real form SPQ, where the maximal compact is the product of SPP, SPQ. And you take H0, the UP subgroup of this, and then you leave this alone. So these are particular examples of groups of uh, Hodge type and particular period events. Hodge Uh, yeah, so there is um, actually, in a sense, uh, the case of an arbitrary group, uh, which is not a Hodge type, to some extent can be reduced to Hodge type. And uh, that's why I call Hodge bundles also those, because of the following fact. Uh, the following fact is that uh, suppose that uh, GC is a semi simple complex group and take G to be any real form, right? And consider uh, a set grading of, as we were doing before, of the uh, complexified uh, Lyapunov, the Lyapunov of GC, where we have, of course, this uh, decomposition according to, to this thing, to this real form. So then what happens is that there is actually another real form, G prime of GC, uh, which is of much type, such that the even part of the gradient uh, uh, are in H prime C and the odd are in N prime C. And where uh, this is the Cartan composition for this other real form. And, uh, and so then you can uh, combine or you can consider the intersection of the original uh, Lie algebra with this uh, one of Hodge type, and we call this G hat, and construct, uh, yeah, so this is uh, a real Lie algebra. And the complexified uh, algebra is given by, has a set grading, which is this one here, which in the even parts you just take the H's and in the odd parts you just take the M's. And this uh, uh, G real form is a Hodge type for G hat for this uh, complexified group uh, you see. And G hat of H0 is really a period domain in the sense that this really has a uh, homogeneous complex structure. <laughs> and uh, moreover, the canonical gradient given by the period domain is the one given here. So, what are uh, the implications that this has for uh, one implication is that if uh, we come back to a G Higgs bundle, where G was the group that may not be of Hodge type, right? <laughs> then uh, remember that being a Hodge bundle meant that E reduced to a structure group to H0 of C and phi was uh, taking values in M1C, then this G Higgs bundle is actually also a G hat bundle, reduces to a G hat, and in particular, is a Hodge <coughs> bundle for this, uh, for this uh, moduli space for G hat, and where, where uh, G uh, hat is of Hodge time. So in a sense, you can always, by taking this a smaller group, reduce the situation to the case uh, of Hodge time. This, for certain purposes, is enough. For other purposes, it is not. Yeah, so, the, but, so that tells you that the monogram representation of the representation is in, is in G hat. Absolutely, yes. But uh, for other purposes, uh, it is not. Uh, this reduction uh, is not enough. But for the purposes of uh, today's talk, it is. And uh, as you can pretend that our group will be a watch type. And uh, uh, nothing really simplifies, in fact. But it's just uh, interesting to connect to uh, why, you know, the original uh, motivation to the, uh, yes, uh, so variation of Hodge structure is linked to groups of Hodge structure. Uh, okay, so now, why, is, uh, I mean, why are we interested in this uh, fixed points under the CSR action? direction? Uh, uh, okay, different people have different interests, but uh, it is because these fixed points encapsulate the topology of the modular space of the economy. So, um, so this, uh, what do I mean by that? So in particular, 
For example, for the case of GLNC, uh, uh, and you take the case, uh, the coprime case, meaning that you think in terms of vector bundles, and the degree is coprime, so the moduli space uh, in that situation is smooth, and uh, the Hitching function is really a true both Morse function, right? And uh, uh, by uh, using Morse theory, so oh, so by going to uh, by doing Morse theory, Hitching in his original paper, uh, first paper, Heat bundles, computed <coughs> the Betty numbers of the moduli space uh, for A equals two, and then uh, years later, Cotton for A equals three, and uh, more recently. Um, for arbitrary n, there's a recursive formula that in the previous time I've mentioned uh, for arbitrary n, uh, so which goes by uh, identifying the Hodge bundles, computing the actually the motif of this uh, of these moduli spaces, and then from there uh, one can uh, localize to find the motif, the topology of the whole moduli space. So this is an ideal program that we would like to carry out. For any uh, other, for any group, except that uh, uh, most of the time the moduli space uh, of the bundles is not smooth, and singularities is then a problem to, to do that. But uh, but there are maybe uh, ways of overcoming this. I hope in the future. But uh, so that's one of the motivations to study this uh, this uh, fixed points. So uh, and formulate this is a long-term goal dream that to study, so we want to study systematically the moduli spaces of Hodge bundles of different types and compute their topology, right? Well, with the hope of localizing this topology of the moduli space of uh, Higma for arbitrary G. But today there is a more modest goal, which in a sense is uh, because of what actually has been mentioned in the previous talk was deep that if uh, in any case, it's good as, a, as far as identifying components is concerned and uh, as a proper function and so on, then uh, it is good enough to actually uh, carry out this program at least as far as connected components is concerned, which uh, is trying to give an answer to Carlos' question in, in an intrinsic way, because it is true that if you uh, look in the what has been done, so basically all the classical groups uh, in a case-by-case -case situation have been done, except the non-maximal for data thing and so on. But we want to have an intrinsic approach to tackle this problem, and this I will uh, today talk about what is the machine to develop this, and in particular to detect in general terms, uh, in an intrinsic way, these higher tabular components and uh, that appear in the cases that have been mentioned and other cases. So that's the goal, and so, but to do that, I have to uh, tell you um, um, uh, something about uh, pre-homogeneous uh, vector spaces. So, I uh, must confess I was not familiar with this theory until relatively recently, and uh, so I don't assume that everybody is familiar. But uh, so this has uh, turned out to be a crucial uh, tool to uh, tackle this problem. And so this is the this is a, a theory introduced by Mikio Sato, and there's this uh, seminal paper of Sato and Kimura, where these are classified. And so here now G, uh, be aware of the change. Uh, G is now a complex reductive group, right? And so this is what a, a pre-homogeneous vector space for G is a complex finite uh, dimensional vector space together with a holomorphic representation of G on B such that G has an open orbit in B and uh, it turns out that this orbit is unique in this so we have G acting on this vector space, finite dimensional vector space if there is an open orbit, we call that a pre-homogeneous vector space uh, so here are some facts, I will, I will uh, list a number of facts that will be relevant to us about pre-homogeneous vector spaces they are results, theorems, and so on, but I will just, definitions, I will just list them in a, in a sort of a, so I say homogeneous way, pre-homogeneous way. Uh, uh, so, so let me a pre-homogeneous vector space for G with a representation of rho. 
So a crucial uh, ingredient in here is a, a non-constant holomorphic function on V. It's called a relative invariant for the action of G if there is a character uh, of G right, such that uh, we do evaluate F in G acting on X. So it doesn't, uh, it's not invariant, it's not invariant, but it's invariant up to this character acting on G. So this is a relative invariant corresponding with corresponding character chi. Right? And uh, so uh, this is uh, um, now uh, consider the open orbit that we said that exists because by definition it's a free homogeneous in the vector space, and consider S to be the, the com uh, complement of the open orbit, this is called the singular set in B. And so you say that, and this will play a crucial role in our theory, that the, a pre homogeneous vector space B is regular. If the isotropies of group uh, for every point in the open orbit is a reductive group, so this is a regular pre homogeneous vector space, and this uh of the space will be crucial. So that condition I repeat that the generic isotropy, generic meaning uh, a point in the open orbit is actually reductive. Right? Okay, so uh, what else? Uh, so uh, some basic facts. So a relative invariant is at the most multiple uniquely determined by the corresponding character. Very easy to prove. Uh, in particular, from this you prove that any relative invariant is actually a homogeneous polynomial. Right? So, these are the relative invariants are homogeneous polynomials. And uh, the existence of a relative invariant is actually can be characterized in terms of the singularity set, the complement of the open orbit, having an irreducible component of co-dimension 1, having a hypersurface. So uh, that, uh, that is the crucial condition for existence of uh, relative invariant. And in fact, uh, uh, you can characterize in these terms uh, a regular homogeneous uh, vector space in the sense that uh, B is regular if and only if the singular set is a hypersurface. But and moreover, uh, if you actually write this uh, decompose this hypersurface in the union of irreducible components, then, uh, then for every irreducible uh, component, uh, which is of course a surface, uh, there is a character, chi i, and a corresponding relative invariant, which is precisely defined by the equation that gives you the irreducible uh, hypersurface. So the, this relative, what I call fundamental relative invariant, are given by the function, by the polynomial that defines the visual component. And there is always a character that, uh, for which that is a relative invariant. And uh, the number of this uh, relative, uh, fundamental relative invariants is in fact uh, coincided with the number of irreducible uh, summits, and the G irreducible summits in it. So if V is irreducible, then there is just one, one, uh, one, uh, uh, relative invariant. All right. What else? Uh, yeah. So the case an important thing. So if I uh, assume that V is regular, I want to define something that we will call a rank of a point uh, in V. And so uh, consider uh, a rank with respect to a relative invariant and the corresponding character. Uh, so it's a rank for associated to uh, relative invariant with the character. And so to do that, so consider such a relative invariant with corresponding character chi and polarize uh, this uh, homogeneous uh, this homogeneous polynomial to get an R linear map. Um, uh, yes. Uh, R in the degree of the uh, Yes, uh, in the degree of this. And so, uh, and, uh, right, of the homogeneous variable. So, this is usual, the usual way how you polarize a bilinear form and so on. And uh, so, do you define the rank of a point 
in D with respect to this character um, as the maximal integer r prime such that these uh, r minus r, uh, r prime form that you have by evaluating this um, uh, q on uh, xx is not identically zero. So that's that. That is uh, uh, so. That is in particular if x is a is a um, a point in the open orbit. The rank is nothing but the degree of this uh, polynomial. And uh, sometimes we refer to the rank of the uh, of this pre homogeneous vector space uh, GB um, with respect to that as the degree of it. The the this uh, relative invariant corresponding Okay, so this notion of RAM will be very important and we will see, we will generalize the notion of RAM in a symmetric space. Okay? In the, uh, yeah. Sorry, um, yeah. Yeah, okay. So there is uh, an important class of uh, pre-homogeneous vector spaces that are uh, relevant to us. This is a general, uh, was, uh, just in the general statements about pre homogeneous vector spaces, but uh, there are uh, an uh, important class which is uh, obtained as follows. Consider G to be a complex semi-simple algebra. And remember, uh, as we already saw, a set grading of G, G is now complex, yeah? is a decomposition of G in the uh, this GK sum spaces with this bracket condition, so it's a derivative of the algebra. And so, uh, so I said gradient of G defines actually a parabolic subalgebra of GC, which is given by just taking the positive, uh, some of the positive pieces, right? And in fact, any set gradient is defined by a parabolic subalgebra. So, uh, yeah, uh, so this gradient R. Uh, basically given by this parabolic uh, well, subalgebra. So here is the important fact, uh, which is goes by the name of uh, the Lindbergh's theorem, which is that uh, let G be a complex <coughs> group with a graded the algebra uh, G, graded like this, and let G0 be the analysis of group of G corresponding to the algebra G0. G0 is a algebra because of the bracket condition. And so then G1 is a pre-homogeneous vector space for the actual action of G0. In fact, G1 has only a finite number of G0 orbits, and, and then once, uh, yeah, so one of them must be open. As a matter of fact, there is no difference in G1 or the others. All of them are, the, uh, all the uh, G, uh, are, uh, GJs, or GKs, are actually uh, pre-homogeneous. That can be deduced from proving that for G1. So these are the class of pre-homogeneous vector spaces that uh, will be relevant to us. And these uh, pre-homogeneous vector spaces um, are called uh, to be of parabolic type because of the <coughs> vector so they come from a parabolic side. Huh? I'm going a too fast, so please feel free to ask questions. So these are the uh, the pre-homogeneous vector spaces that will show up in our story. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so the Hermitian case, for example, if, if the group, if you take uh, a group of uh, uh, um, a semi-simple reality group of Hermitian type, so G is now a real form. Uh, so, uh, which means, remember, that G mod H is actually a uh, Kähler, then if uh, this is a rectangular composition, so N has a complex structure, that is precisely the, the, the permission condition and the uh, complex structure, and so the ah, uh, yeah. and so the uh, yeah, so the complexification of N decomposes in the you know, in I, so the eigenspaces for i are minus i, n plus and n minus, and so the representation of hc on n plus is a pre homogeneous vector space. So this is a particular example of um, pre homogeneous vector space of parabolic type 
where the grading is given like this. Yeah. Now, moreover, uh, so the regularity condition that I say uh, is important is a generalization uh, of the more familiar condition of the of two type is more familiar in the context of permission, uh, permission symmetric spaces. So n plus is regular in the sense that I just uh, defined it the regular pre-homology numerical space, if and only if the symmetric space is of tube type. And this means that the symmetric space here is, uh, sorry, this is a mistake, I'm going to say biholomorphic. So it's biholomorphic to a tube over a cone. Uh, more concretely, the cone is the non compact duo of the uh, Schiller boundary which is, in this case, in order to be a tube type, is the symmetric space uh, of, of common type. So, um, this is just for the people that know what this is. And, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, symmetric spaces, which is symmetric space of tube type, are generalizations of the, uh, of the Poincaré disk. The Poincaré disk admits a realization as an upper half plane, so we are talking about uh, symmetric spaces whose corresponding bounded symmetric domain has such a generalization, similar to the other half. Yeah? So this is a tube condition, and so the tube condition is equivalent to the regular as a homogeneous of this space. Um, so in this situation, if G is simple and of tube type, then M plus is reducible as we know. And uh, and the uh, and determinant uh, Determinant that exists in this situation is the relative invariant for the action of which C on M plus, which corresponds precisely to the Toledo character. And, uh, and uh, the rank of this uh, pre homogeneous uh, vector space with respect to the Toledo invariant is exactly the rank of symmetric space. This is what I said before that this notion of rank generalizes the notion of rank of a symmetric space of a permission symmetry. Okay, so uh, now assume that G is a much type. Remember that this this is something that we can uh, uh, that we can assume as for the for what I explained before, and that we have a Hodge structure as I was explaining there, and uh, and so uh, this this is a subgroup of H and a set gradient whole package that we have. Then G one of C is a pretty homogeneous space for the action of H. C of C is a pre-homogeneous space of body types. That's why we are studying this. And now uh, consider uh, E and phi to be a Hodge boundary for this Hodge structure. And, and then consider F phi to be a relative invariant with corresponding character cut. So we can define a uh, topological invariant uh, of this, uh, a topological invariant of this uh, Hodge bundle, uh, which we call tau chi, by considering the line bundle. So you have a character, and we have a character of H0C, and remember that E is an H0C bundle. So you can, using that character, consider the line bundle, E chi, and take the degree. So this is the invariant that I call uh, tau chi. Okay? So this is the, the first result that is joint work with uh, ongoing work. So that's the case to fill in, but uh, everything seems to work. And uh, with Olivier uh, Ricard and Brian Collier and Amino Toledo. And uh, this uh, uh, first result is that this invariant here is bounded by the rank of uh, phi with respect to this character times 2g minus 2, where the rank of phi is uh, the generic rank of P of X. P of X, remember, is in, in G1, and G1 is my people in the space, so I don't have a, a rank uh, for a point there. Right? So in particular, uh, the maximal value of this is the rank of the people in the space, which was a degree of this uh, relative invariant, and we have this inequality. So you can see this inequality what generalizes the member group inequalities as well as some mechanical inequalities for 
uh, variation of conscious structure coming from families of uh, varieties of curves. And uh, so that's why we call it like this. Uh, there is a particular character among all the possible uh, fundamental characters that you may have. Um, I am assuming that, yeah, okay, so among all the, the uh, fundamental characters, a particular character uh, coming from the complex structure of G mod X0, remember this is a pivot domain, has complex structure, for more is actually true. And uh, so uh, this uh, particular uh, character, so the invariant we call it tau, because really this is what uh, generalizes the Toledo invariant in the Hermitian case. And of course, for this particular character, as for any other one, we do have the inequality that I just uh, showed, but uh, um, the rigidity it resolves to this uh, particular uh, invariant, and uh, so we uh, call uh, Hodge one of this called maximal. Maximal. If this um, special Toledo kind uh, invariant is actually the maximal value given by the Kellogg Miller inequality. And so here is a, a, a rigidity result that uh, one has for uh, maximal, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so if uh, if phi is, is uh, maximal here, right? So if phi is polystable, then there is an embedding. Ah, oh. uh, so if phi is polystable, then there is an embedding of uh, PSL to R in G, such that up to a compact factor, a representation corresponding to this heat bundle is given by factorizing a Fuchsian uh, representation, uh, a, uni a uniformizing representation of X with this uh, embedding of this authority. This is, in a sense, and uh, you see this relates to actually to the Hitching component in a sense, and also to the uh, permission uh, case that there is a whole point of notorious showing this unifying scheme. Uh, but, uh, let's, um, let's move on. Sure. Is there any condition that we can put that gives you this type of uh, representations on the theory? Sorry? Say that again. Can we put some additional conditions that could imply that this is a theory? I don't know about that because I don't know what you mean by what you mean. Okay, it's not my favorite for the bad for us. Ah, well, that I don't know. Yes, I don't know. And you see, this is both the general groups and the, yeah, particularly the ones coming from the right rights or lots of groups. So, I mean, this is not general, but maybe I don't know. So, but then here's another rigidity result that uh, sort of, um, sort of uh, is what we call Katie correspondent. Uh, so, and uh, so if it if is a maximal correspondent, then what happens is that the rank of V of X is actually the maximal possible rank for every point in the Riemann surface. And then the Higgs field, in fact, gives me a reduction of the structured group of the bundle E. Uh, in fact, not quite of the bundle E, I have to twist it by some group of the canonical bundle, the topological structure, but morally, gives me a reduction of E to a, a smaller group, uh, which is actually, this is the isotropy the group of an element in the open orbit. And so, so this is my bundle, reduces the structured group, so phi, Actually, the, the Higgs field uh, is now encoded in giving me a reduction of the structure group of E to another bundle, uh, E prime. Right? And moreover, every, uh, pr every uh, principal bundle, H0 prime bundle, comes from a Hodge bundle with a tau in maximum. So, uh, and uh, moreover, the uh, stability condition for the Hodge bundle is equivalent to the stability of this principal bundle. Yeah? 
you can see this is telling me, this scaling correspondence is telling me that there is an isomorphism of the moduli space of maximal Hodge bundles of a given type with the moduli space of principal bundles. Much simpler kind of thing. But in particular, this is telling me that I can detect uh, sort of invariants that were hidden originally coming from this new structure group. Right? So this gives me new invariants of the Hodge bundles. Um, now, we, uh, we, so as I said before, the idea of Miller inequality generalizes the minimum group inequality for linear bundles when G is of the mission type. And E phi is uh, such that actually phi takes values, let's say, in n plus. Right? So this is a minimum of the Higgin function. So it's a, it's, a, it's a fixed point in this direction. And in this case, the tau that I'm defining, the tau that I have been defining for uh, general variations of what structure is actually the Toledo tau, defined by Toledo. And, uh, and, uh, and in this situation, so uh, what is actually true, the inequality uh, that one has on the Toledo invariant is actually true for any semi-stable Higgs bundle, which is of this form, for the a few plus and a few minus, not just for the, for the ones in which few minus is zero. Right? And, uh, and there's a K correspondence that uh, for every uh, maximal Higgs bundle that was already mentioned in Steve's talk. And uh, this uh, goes like this if uh, G is a group of addition type, which uh, such that G modulations of tube time, then uh, consider the uh, G prime mod H prime the non contact dual of the Schiller boundary. Remember, the Schiller boundary, which is a certain part of the topological boundary, is a contact symmetric space, and so there is a, a non contact dual. So, uh, so H is a real form of HC, and G prime is a real form, is, a, is an uncontact real form of HC as well. I mean, this is contact, it's non contact. So, this, this, uh, so, uh, there is a nice morphism between the moduli space of maximal J bundles and another moduli space of K square twisted objects to this new group, which is related to the, to the cone uh, of this, uh, um, of this tube realization of this, uh, symmetric space. Okay. So, let me just, so this is, so more is true. Uh, in principle, uh, in the case of just the Hermitian case. And so, uh, I just want to claim that we can generalize the Hermitian case uh, to find a kind of greater bounds and k correspondence for more general Higgs bundles, not just for Hodge bundles. And I would like to explain this uh, in particular for Hodge bundles that are a minimum of the function, function. Because those, uh, that, this particular mechanism will uh, be the mechanism to detect this uh, higher technical component. Okay? And, but this can be done for any Hodge bundle, not necessarily in a minimum. And uh, I mean, to some extent. Uh, and so what you do is you consider the stable manifold of a Hodge bundle. Uh, these are just, you know, these are the heat bundles that flow, that flow to this to this, uh, to this uh, Hodge bundle, this variation of Hodge structure. And uh, so this actually are described by the heat bundles of the following form. It's just the, uh, the, the Hodge bundle here, but then you add heat fields that are negative. And remember, we only have odd things because we are in a group of Hodge type. So these are here. Okay, those are the heat bundles that flow to the uh, yeah. and, uh, and so, so let me think about here, that suppose that this uh, Hodge bundle is what uh, we call a maximal minimum. So the minimum, <laughs> it's a funny terminology, is a minimum for the Higgin function, but it's maximal in the sense that I just define for the Higgin vector space. And we can back, right? So, uh, so then, there is a key correspondence for these objects that sends E to a pair, E prime, G prime, 
Query prime is uh, the H0 prime C bundle that I constructed before. And then the new X field is obtained uh, by bracketing the V1 that appears in the hot bundle with all the other pieces. So when you do this, actually, uh, so here's a, an important thing that actually does not happen for any hot bundle, uh, but it happens for a minimum. Uh, there's more rigidity in that situation. If you are a minimum, uh, one can show that one has these isomorphisms here, right? for k less than minus 1. And uh, this in particular implies you can compute that these extra uh, x fields that you get in the k partner, they have uh, actually uh, powers of uh, various powers of k. This may be resonating now already what uh, Steve was explaining for us over here, where you have different powers of the canonical bundle. And, uh, and on the other hand, T1 prime, you have to take care because it's not covered by this. And uh, they uh, take values in a certain space here, and you can identify that space quite explicitly. Uh, okay, so, <coughs> right. Okay. So here is a. I will put this as a as a as a claim. Because there are um, so in this working project, we really have to still uh, fix a number of things. And but uh, this is what uh, the moduli space of these objects. And now, uh, so objects. This moduli these objects meaning uh, this uh, uh, a bundle which is H zero C this G1, which is in G1, and these other things, the ones I were considering. But now I'm not assuming that this is a, um, this in itself is polystable, but actually the whole thing is polystable. Claim this is a union of higher circular components of uh, the modulus with big bundles. So, and, uh, in particular, uh, so this is how you get to the circular components. They appear from this maximal minimum. And, uh, and so in particular, the KD uh, partner, which is this new object that I was uh, describing, detects new topological equivalents. This coming from this, uh, from the structure group of, uh, from this uh, structure group of the new bundle, the KD partner. Now, uh, more. Yeah, so moreover, all this is actually, all this structure of the game party is actually codified in a certain real form of this new group. I mean, remember, this is the isotropic group of the, uh, in the open orbit of this of our pre continuous vector space. It's regular, that's why it's in the back. And, and then, uh, uh, moreover, the, uh, so this notion of Positivity that a building up on work of uh, rock control and mystic and Mercury uh, and, um, and others of uh, Minghart. So, this can be generalized by Richard and Minghart that this involves uh, a certain parabolic subgroup of the real group that allows you to define positive representations. This P can be recovered. So the, the rigidity that we have here that is given by being a maximal minimum recovers, can recover you and give you this kind of also group. And so then so you can see how positivity appears here. Uh, so the conclusion, or one conclusion is that these components that we obtain from uh, maximal minima uh, which we could have called uh, KD components are actually just the higher technical components. This is the, so these are actually how you get the higher technical components. And so in particular, this puts in the same umbrella, this construction, the how you obtain kitchen components, how you obtain the maximal components in the Hermitian case, and how you obtain the uh, exotic components that Steve Boyd is describing in the SOPQ case. So they all actually, I mean, uh, actually Steve was saying uh, this is outing from 
two different mechanisms. There is just one mechanism. That's the conclusion, right? In a sense, I mean, you were right the way they were originally obtained, but the, the uh, fact is that there is just one mechanism. And this mechanism is by uh, this maximal minima uh, and uh, just and the K correspondence. And so they are K components. And, uh, and, uh, and so this uh, general theory somehow will give an answer, uh, eventually an implicit answer, to Kato's question of what do you know about all the components for real groups? I mean, even though, even though uh, many, uh, there's an answer for most, I mean, for classical groups, etc. So Non-maximum to label and so on. But this approach will give you exactly, you know, uh, you either have this, uh, this uh, K components, or there is just one component. That's all. Right? And so in an intrinsic by just classifying, by classifying actually this uh, first this uh, regular uh, pre-homogeneous vector spaces and the, the, the classifying these things, the classification of these things should be equivalent to the classification of the uh, parabolics that define the positive structures. And that is how you solve this. So, uh, yeah, before I finish, I'd like to say that. Um, I, uh, I learned uh, that uh, Friday is, the, is dedicated to a great hearing and I am uh, very sorry that I will not be here because I'm leaving and, uh, and uh, I want to just uh, pay tribute to Andre uh, who I knew uh, uh, for my years as a graduate student in Oxford in the late 80s, early 90s, and 91 and uh, so that I uh, Steve and enjoyed many uh, discussions with him and we learned a lot and we spent uh, uh, a lot of time together and plus almost by accident looking for something else the other day I found this photograph and, um, and so where is this happening Steve? One and one. Okay. One and one. That's exactly. So this uh, photograph is in the academic year 91-92 in the one and one. So that here? <laughs> and so uh, there was a very memorable occasion where uh, we uh, yeah, enjoy uh, and very celebrate a little bit. Okay, that's.